Hey y'all, welcome to the 3 Sourcer YouTube channel. Today I'll be reverse engineering this product. It's called the GoPro Tool. What the purpose of it is, is to tighten down those thumb screws that GoPro is attached to their mounts with. And then on this end, it has a little bottle opener and then a hole for a keychain. So I think that we can reverse engineer this relatively easily and be able to 3D print something pretty similar. Just thought I'd take you along with my design process for it. So thanks for watching, hope you'll enjoy it. All right, so my setup here is still a work in progress, but I think we can get the job done. So here's the GoPro tool again, and you'll notice that it has more notches than it's really needed. Really, there's four, I guess, prongs on the on the thumb screw, and printing is not necessarily great at doing these little fine details. So for us, I think it'd be better if we just made one that fits this at four different locations instead of eight. As you can see here, fits there and then fits you know, in eight different positions. And I think that the best way to really reverse engineer this is base it of the wrench here. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just trace around the outside of this wrench here. Okay, so that's reasonably decent drawing. And you know, the main things we want for me is we want this distance so the maximum width, essentially. So it's somewhere around uh, 21.25. And then the narrowest distance is this here. And it's roughly 15. All right. And you know, really you can almost draw a circle here. And this is our diameter essentially. And then we have almost other circles that go in this direction, kind of around the perimeter. So that might be one way we can design it, is have basically four circles around another circle with a diameter of around 21.25. And then another thing that I noticed is that this actually has a hexagonal uh, internal cutout here. So we can also use that to improve uh, the surface area so that it's easier to uh, apply some force to this thumb screw. So I think the best way to do that is essentially just measure um, the width of this hexagon here. So it's roughly nine. You know, people people design this obviously, and usually they pick even numbers, especially in the metric system. So uh, I'm gonna try to kind of draw, and it's not centered, so that's important. It's not in the midline. If you can appreciate that, it's a little bit off-centered there. So I need to kind of represent that. The drawing where it's not perfectly centered and I think for me at least instead of trying to figure out the offset I think really just a guess and check type method is just as easy because with uh, 3d printing you know we can print this off or something that fits this off in five ten minutes and go through a couple iterations really quickly instead of trying to get it perfect on the first try. All right, so I added the picture that we just sketched out to the screen. Uh, so now we can get started in Fusion. Uh, first thing we need to do is create a new component. So I'm gonna call this uh, wrench. And the diameter that I'm gonna start with here is gonna be the 21.25. And what I'm trying to do initially is just make something that uh, can basically encapsulate that wrench to make sure that we have it the right size. So that's really the most important part about this little product is that it actually works and does what it's supposed to do. Length here was 15, so we can see that we can do a center point rectangle and make that 15. Next, we can add 
some circles around the edges because that's where the uh, dip kind of occurs. I'm just gonna kind of draw them unconstrained initially. And now I'm gonna add a tangent between that and here. All right, and then as far as the size of this, this is again, probably not the best way to do it, but sometimes I think just like guess and check, probably 20-ish. And there's this trick you can make all these equal. So that is equal. This dimension is equal. Let's look like that. And that. That's how you do it. So rather than having to change a bunch of different numbers, it's really better if you can just link them all to a single number. So now if I wanted to change this a diameter for these four circles, I could do it right here and only have to change one number. So it's kind of like having a parameter, but uh, it's kind of within the sketch itself. So I discovered that relatively recently. Okay, so now just to give you an idea of what uh, I'm trying to recreate here, we think about what the head of that GoPro mount or GoPro thumbstick look like. It looks something kind of like that with the hexagon in the center, right? So that's kind of what I was thinking is recreate that little uh, divot part here. And then in the center, we have the hexagon. So polygon, circumscribed polygon. And it's a little bit you know, off kilter, as you might call it. And we said that this was around nine. And then to constrain this, I'm gonna make just a horizontal line here, and make that into a construction line. So now it's just a, a dotted line there. And then you can basically make the angle between here and here a certain distance, so you know, something like that would be a good kind of first attempt. Not really sure exactly what it is, but. And if you think about it, so this was a recessed portion. So to make it actually fit, we probably need to go a little bit below nine. So let's do like 8.8 .8 instead. And then for all of these, these are still not constrained because they can move in this direction. So, what I'll do with those is, let's see. Yeah, so you can make this horizontal with this. So this is a pretty useful constraint. Let's see, that's vertical, and it just kind of automatically recognizes it. So now, we have something that looks kind of like what we're trying to do, so. Again, if you go in and extrude this, now you can kind of think of that as the head of the piece there. All right, so we're trying to make a range. We're not trying to recreate that head. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just make a bigger circle. Uh, let's make this 30, sounds good. Think about it. We want the wrench to sit inside of what we're making. So do something like this. Now you could imagine the wrench fitting down inside of that. at it from this way, you might imagine that the wrench could fit inside of that, right? So this is where I would just go ahead and print this off, because this is relatively decent um, piece. 
probably won't fit perfectly, but it'll probably get close enough that we can make some adjustments. The general rule is to add some chamfers so that it fits in there a little bit easier. All right, so now if we send this over to 3D print, so let's put it on speed, or actually put it on draft. PLA Prusa. So 13 minutes. So that's my point is that in 13 minutes we can literally test this out. So is it really important that we get it perfect the first time? Not really in my opinion. So I'm gonna go ahead and print this out and we'll see you know, how close it is to the actual real thing. Alright, so here's our 3D print. Came out pretty well. Like I said, it only took couple minutes to print off and uh, this is how it fits so it's not bad it's not perfect by any means but it's not not bad either I think that our hexagon is a little bit off so I think we need to increase you know, it's hard to tell but the, uh, the thumb screw is a little off as far as being centered. So I think what ha what's happened is that hex screw angle that we kind of estimated needs to be increased a little bit. But otherwise, this thing fits pretty well. I think we can reduce the outer circle diameter just a little bit. So maybe we bump it down by half a millimeter or so right there. But otherwise, I think pretty happy with this. and. Uh, like I said, again, we can jump into Fusion, change those few things, and then print another one, and hopefully have one that fits pretty well.